This guide was built using difficulty 8 and 105 packs equipped. We do not have the three bio packs that will be disabled during the leaderboard run, nor do we have power dynamics equipped. The difference between having power dynamics equipped might be the difference between rank 500 and rank 50. With that said, you are going to need a very sizable Masters of Evil team if that's going to be your only team. You will also need to use Quicksilver instead of Absorbing Man. If that is your only team, you will need them at around 1.1 to 1.2 million power. Otherwise, you'll need to sub in your X Factor with Absorbing Man, and they're going to need to be around 850k, as well as having Masters of Evil Quicksilver at around 850k. If your teams are not this big, I do not suggest panic building. Instead, I suggest dropping the difficulty to 7 and settling for a lower rank. You will still be able to push your potential to its extreme using this guide. Welcome to the official Nova Trial Guide. We'll be starting with Node 2. Our keys to success are to flip the Echo buffs via the Pact, utilize Termian mechanics to take very little damage, and we need to leave this node with Ultron and Quicksilver at full life. For this first Master of Evil node, we're going to be using the four pieces of Master of Evil with Quicksilver. If you do not have Quicksilver built up, you can sub in Observing Man, though it's going to make all of these nodes a bit more difficult. My team is very large. I've leveled them all up to level 95. Many of them are six yellow stars, some six red stars. Kang, Titania, and Ultron are all geared tier 17, and the other two are geared tier 16. To make sure that this works for more of the community, I was able to also get my hands on a 900k team and do this exact same thing. I will not be showing that footage for this first node, but we will for the second and third node as it adds an interesting perspective. So the first order of business when we enter this node is to knock Quake below 50% life. That'll activate the Warp World Scourge, which is going to flip the buffs on the Echo and the Kate. Taking the retaliation damage from two Echoes with offense down isn't the end of the world, but to avoid one of them, I will attack the right side first. Next, I will pivot to the left side and I will stun the enemy Echo and then target the enemy Kate. Once Kate's gone, it'll trigger the wave coming in or wave two. As far as cooldowns go, we can recoup cooldowns on the Global Bio node for Titania and Moonstone, and on the Cosmic mode for Kang if we so need. So don't worry about holding their abilities. But for Quicksilver and Ultron, we want to save as much as possible. I take out the Kestrel as she is a big source of trouble, and if we need to summon more Ultron bots because we have a weaker Ultron, then that option is available to us. From here, I will go ahead and obliterate this wave with Kang. I was able to do this as well with a 5 red, a 5 yellow Star Kang. Keep in mind that with two crystals, they'll be getting benefits from two different crystal passives, so when we drop them low life, they will pretty much come back to full. It's when this third wave drops in that we need to start considering using some sneaky turn meter manipulation, whether that be using another Moonstone Ultimate, Ultron Turn Meter Rewinds, or Kang Basic, we need to make sure that we're not taking any damage here. The big reason for this is that we need Ultron to have full life heading to the next node, as that is the requirement for him to have revive once. You'll notice here that even though the special would have done good AoE damage, I opt to do the basic targeting Black Bolt. The reason for that is turn meter manipulation. I know with Kang having that offense up and the speed up, I don't need to use the special, as with the extra turn meter from the basic, he will lap the enemy. And from there, we're able to clean this up. That'll be it for Node 2. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Here are our keys to success for Node 6. We're going to neutralize the gambits. We can do a burn attack with X Factor to get the gambits as low as possible. This was necessary on the smaller account. We will control any cleanses that drop in on wave two. We will control the rogue with Moonstone Special so that she is laden with trauma. And we will make sure we end the node with Ultron Ultimate available as we will need that in the final node. For node six, I'm actually gonna be showing the baby teams in action. We're gonna be using X Factor plus Observed Man. You will need all 10 characters for nodes two, six, and 10 built if you have a small Masters of Evil and you need to utilize this burn attack. Absorbing Man gives offense up to the enemy gambits. This isn't the end of the world as we're going to trigger Warp World and get that flipped. 
To do so, the Loki and the Thor need to be dropped below 50% life. This is actually very easy as those Loki and Thor are super low health. This immunity trigger is very important as it's going to stop those gambits from going into stealth and getting all healed up. From this point on, we're going to be eating a lot of ability blocks. Just make sure that Shatterstar is not the target of this as we do need his defense down on his second turn. It is now Shatterstar's turn, and as you'll see, he's going to push the Thor. This flips all the negative debuffs on our side and all the positive buffs on the enemy side, and because of that, we're able to target these gambits and get them low enough for an easy follow-up attack. We're not afraid to summon in the Multiple Man Ultimate here because those dupes do not spawn with Deathproof. Do not use the Multiple Man Special. A big enough X-Factor will be able to actually kill these gambits. I was able to do so with my X-Factor on difficulty 9. This may become the strategy for Krakens to push difficulty 9. The only enemy we killed was Loki, but we put a lot of great abilities and we got those gambits low enough for a follow-up clean. So now we're going to go in with our main 4 piece and Quicksilver. Even though those gambits are really low, we want to make sure we take them out so we're not taking any unnecessary pings. You'll also definitely want to open up with the Kang special so that you have offense up on your entire team. This is going to let us snowball into the second wave. If you find yourself in this position, make sure you get a stun on the enemy Valkyrie. This actually negates her passive. We can now take her out or take out the Fosters without any concern of her giving them safeguard and all of those buffs. From here, we're going to use the Quicksilver Ultimate just to clear the board and get that second wave summoned in. I'm not concerned about his abilities not being up for that final wave as he is a striker and will incur a bunch of ability energy. This would have been very bad if Jane Foster was able to use her ultimate, but again, because we used the burn attack, we're in much better position. When this second wave drops in, we need to take out the cleansers as quickly as possible. That's your Beast, your Emma, and your Phoenix. From here, we do want to get into cooldown reservation mode. We probably want to save our Moonstone abilities and our Titania abilities. Ultron, we just want to make sure his ultimate is available. So you see, I resummon in and we do a nice turn meter rewind to the enemy rogue. We make sure not to attack that Phantom X as it could have dropped my bot below 50% life and flipped all our buffs. I use the Titania ultimate to get a ability block on the Dazzler that is 100% necessary as we can't have her flipping our debuffs. We continue to turn me to rewind the enemy rogue. And here Kang is going to come in and do his job. He already had offense up so I didn't bother using the special. You can use your Kang abilities as we're going to use him in the cosmic section and prep those cooldowns anyway. Now we're just playing cleanup. So Ultron does have his ultimate now available. Kang has all of his abilities available, even though we could have prepped him later anyway. That's going to be it for Node 6. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Node 10 is by far the most difficult node for sheer power, especially if we had to use our burn attack on node 6. But we do have some passive success. We need to pace through the first wave so Gambit drops in on Moonstone's turn. We need to control and nuke the enemy Gambit and Rogue. We need to then control the enemy Heartless and enemy Agatha while nuking the enemy Morgan. And then we need to turn me to rewind the enemy Apocalypse until he's dead. For that last wave, there's two different options. We can either go directly at the Apocalypse to kill him before he gets a turn, or leave him up and deal with everybody else before him and finish him off last. On the main screen, I'm going to be showing the baby account in action, as it's more comparable with most people's rosters, but in the corner, I'll be showing my footage, as that's going to be very good information for people pushing difficulty 9. Let's get into it. 
Clearly, we're going to be using the four piece Masters of Evil with Quicksilver as our X Factor and Man were used on Node 6. This first wave is basically a gimme wave. What we want to do is get it down so that it perfectly times the second wave with Moonstone's second turn. To do that, we absolutely need to use the Kang special to get offense up to our Ultron as he's going to be ulting one of these characters down. Next, we need to use the Moonstone ultimate onto the Psylocke. This is going to give defense down, and more importantly, it's going to stun one of the Psylocke's. If they're alive when the second wave drops in, we can't have them throwing all the debuffs back at us. Now we're down to three enemies. We need to take out two more. This is going to be easily accomplished with the Kang basic. After Kang's turn is Moonstone. So the second wave dropped in and Moonstone has taken a turn. This was perfectly timed. Now we're going to summon our Ultron army and use clever turn meter rewinds and ability blocks to control this unlimited X-Men team while we take them out. We'll get our Ultron ready to use his ultimate and kill this Gambit. Unfortunately, he's still one energy away, so we're not going to be able to do that. We want to make sure we don't push any unlimited X-Men members below 50% life, as that will trigger a rogue taunt. We now have an ability block on Dazzler, and it's go time. We'll use the Kang ultimate. This is a nasty turn meter rewind and just crazy damage. Both rogue and gamut will now be taken out by the Quicksilver. And now the Darkhold is in play. We definitely want to be able to take out this Morgan before she does any of her abilities. Oddly enough, she's actually very squishy. So we're able to do that here using the special. This also renewed our Kang offense up, which will be very helpful when the Apocalypse and Red Hulk drop in. Now we will continue to abuse our turn meter mechanics with the Ultron, the Ultron boss, Quicksilver and Kang and Moonstone. So now that the Apocalypse and the Gamma Wave is in play, we have a decision to make. Do we turn Meter Rewind and go directly at the Apocalypse, or do we kill everybody except the Apocalypse? On my main account, I always just went directly for the Apocalypse, and I never once struggled. And this is where we make our decision. It looks like we've decided to go for the enemy Red Hulk and save Apocalypse for last. So we take out the Red Hulk, and now we can go for the Apocalypse. We have two different Ultron Acceleration bots, which means we're rewinding this Apocalypse and he will never get a turn. We have so many forms of rewind here that even when the Apocalypse goes below 50% life, we're not worried about that speed bar he gets. I will avoid attacking the Apocalypse with the other Ultron bots though, as I don't want him to just drain heal off of them. That's a big mistake. And one of the reasons X-Factor may not be good here at all, because even on a cleanup, Apocalypse will outheal the damage your X-Factor does. We continue the turn meter manipulations, and now it's just Apocalypse left. It is now Kang's turn, and this is gonna wrap up Node 10. Let me know how you feel about this in the comment sections below, and we'll have the other sections out shortly. Bye for now. That's it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.